Hello, hello, and welcome. I'm Bailey from Glowforge. And I'm Nick from Glowforge. And thanks for joining us live today. We are here in Seattle in Pioneer Square, if any of you all are familiar, here in our studio. And today we're doing a live stream. We're really live right now. So if you're in chat, <laughs> either on YouTube or if you're on Instagram, we can see your questions. Um, we've got our coworker Ellen here mm -hmm. to field questions for us. So if you have questions about making money with Glowforge, any other Glowforge questions, mm -hmm. put them in chat and we will get them answered. Absolutely. Did we ask anybody a question in chat to start with? Sometimes we ask where people are from, whether Did they're new to Glowforge. Everyone has been chiming in with the, from all over the country. Nice. Um, I saw someone down the road in Puyallup too. Amazing. <laughs> any international folks with us today? Let's Sometimes we get see. a few people from, uh, from other countries, which is really exciting. Uh, yeah. And I would love to know how many of you out there are new to Glowforge and how many of you already own a Glowforge yep. too. Uh, we got a lot of stuff that we could share today and it'd be great if we can tailor it to who's watching. So let us know. Exactly. But this info should be useful to you either way. Mm -hmm. So today, um, hopefully you saw we're focusing on uh, making money with Glowforge, uh, printing your way to a profit, which is easier than you might think. <laughs> yeah, it's a hot topic. And it's something we've talked about a lot in the history of Glowforge. Oh, yeah. I mean, Bailey and I go back years and years mm -hmm. here. We've been seven and a half years, I think, maybe yep. eight closer for you. Close to eight, uh, yeah. <laughs> at the company. So we've seen a lot and we've dealt with a lot of customers, uh, some of whom go way back. In fact, one of the customer stories we'll talk about later uh, was one of our original beta testers. Yeah. <laughs> so his business must be, what, six years old now, something like that? Yeah, and I was, well, spoiler alert for later, but I was shocked <laughs> when I look at the website, how sophisticated it had right. become. And uh -huh. Uh -huh. everything he was offering. So I, we'll, I we'll get to I still see him at craft fairs and things too. Like yeah. he's there, out there in the community. So what we have for you today is 10 tips on how to make money with Glowforge. These are tips that Nick and I have collected from speaking with real people who have done mm -hmm. it and just knowing the machine uh, and seeing what people have done um, themselves. Uh, we're going to show you how much money you can make from just one sheet of proof grade mm -hmm. or one sheet of wood material, whatever you'd like to use. <laughs> Um, we're going to tell you about some Glowforge owners who've really done it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also going to give you a the first look at our newest bundle, which was designed for making money with Glowforge. So if you don't yet have a Glowforge, we've put together a, uh, a bundle of items that is like a really great deal and will help you get going on that, that business you've been wanting to start or scale. Um, and there's still so much time for like the spring and summer markets. You could get going now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then finally, if you are new to Glowforge and you've not really seen this thing in action, or if you're looking to pick up a few tips and tricks, stick around for around tip number six. Uh, when we'll get into a print from the catalog, we'll do some customization and kind of show yes. this thing working. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, so before we dive into the 10 tips, I did want to let you know um, we have a brand new bundle. It's launching today. It's called the Sell Your Best Bundle. Um, so that's going to include a Glowforge Pro, mm -hmm. 12 months of our premium software, which we'll show you a sneak peek of mm -hmm. uh, here. It's got designs. It's got catalog. Uh, sorry, it's got design tools. It's got a catalog full of designs that are ready to print. Mm -hmm. And it's got our newest feature, Magic Canvas, that we just launched last month. Super cool. Another cool thing about that. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> didn't mean to interrupt. Really. Just thinking about the business aspect. Yeah. Those catalog designs, the majority of those you can sell. They're sellable. Too. So if you're looking for some quick ways to get started, those designs you can print them. You can sell them. Yeah. Uh, and then there was one other thing too. Oh yeah. Um, the premium subscription includes 20% off proof grade materials. Yes. Right. Which again, if you're starting a business. Great to get that and discount. And this bundle also includes a $500 proof grade gift card. So you have $500 credit essentially to the proof grade shop and you're going to get that at the 20% discount during the first year. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. And we were able to include shipping in this bundle, which mm -hmm. is exciting because shipping is usually $350, which is not fun chunk, to pay for anyone. Right. So <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, yeah, so that includes shipping. So this is a great deal. I will be sending out the link via email. If you want to check it out um, right now, I can pop it in chat too, but it's glowforge.com slash Sell your best bundle. Cool. Excellent. Well, with that, we get started. yes. All right. So we're doing a countdown style. So we're going to start with tip number 10. Yes. Today, tip right? number 10. This is more of a fun fact that we will <laughs> explain and give context to. But uh, number 10 is that on average, it takes just three to six months for folks to pay off their Glowforge. Yeah. Which is shockingly <laughs> low, right? That's yeah. a small amount of time, really, when you think about it. Yeah, I, I've heard stories like folks will say, you know, I wanted to get a Glowforge and I gave myself a, a, a business plan where I thought maybe within a year or two. Mm -hmm. And then they're shocked when something that they make starts selling like hotcakes uh -huh. and they, they sell it off in month four. And they're like, oh, well, hey, That's this it. is all profit. Here we are, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll do this more exactly. often. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and so we wanted to kind of demonstrate that to you, um, just how much you could make 
in a short amount of time with how much you can make with just one sheet of proof grade. Yeah, this was almost like a personal challenge yeah. for us in many ways. And this stemmed from seeing some other customers do similar kind of things, seeing how many things they can fit on the sheet. Um, but if we told you this earring display here, all of these earrings that are on here, which was, I think 180 individual earrings, so about 90 pairs of earrings, all fit on one single $22 to $25 sheet of proof grade. Right. Which is quite impressive, really, when you think about it. And we decided to zhuzh some of these up a little bit. We added some paint to a couple. We added some inlays. But we experimented with different ways that you could um, essentially add some customization to these so you could charge more for them. So and we have these priced at... Sorry, I think you were about no, no, to no. say, Bailey. Yeah, priced at a couple different price points because we've got a couple different types of earrings here, but these mm -hmm. were all printed, to be clear, from one sheet of proof grade work. Yeah. So and I think this was maple or something, 20, about 20 to $25 each or so. And this, all of the earrings on here were made with that same sheet. Oh, we got a question? Calligraphy by Ali is asking, what it does proof grade mean? Ah, okay. Excellent <laughs> Great question. Great question, yes. So we got a question about what does proof grade mean? Proof. Proof grade is the line of materials that we sell that were made specifically to work perfectly with your Glowforge. You don't have to use them. You can walk into your local craft store or you can raid your recycling bin for cardboard or what have you, but we have created a line of um, woods, acrylics, uh, there's leather, there's a product called draft board that helps with prototyping, mm -hmm. and they all come pre-masked so they're ready to be stuck in a laser with this little uh, this paper coating over um, top to keep the finish perfect and also a QR code so your Glowforge reads the QR code presets the cut and engrave settings and it's kind of the flawless easy experience that that you can opt for but but you're you, but you don't have to you can also choose your own materials maybe yeah. you can get it for cheaper or you just have a really great you know wood source near you absolutely yeah. maybe there's something in the catalog uh, sorry the uh, proof grade store that we don't offer yet mm -hmm. um, but it is a pretty complete line yeah um, this piece that bailey was holding up right now is a piece of light cherry plywood so this um, is the size that all of those earrings came from yes yeah. and actually i was going to ask ellen if you could grab the sheet i could see it right there <laughs> and we could show people uh <laughs> kind of so what we were working i had written with. down if we sold everything Thanks. on here with the way that we have it priced we've got some 17 dollars items mm -hmm. some uh 10 dollars studs and some some for 15 these dangled ones so we've got dangly for 15 painted dangly for 17. Um, and so if we sold everything on here, it's $1,250 using just one sheet. And of course, there's a little bit of finishing materials. Yeah. Um, there's probably, there's all these earring hooks, but those are quite inexpensive. They really are these days. So I think too. we're talking maybe a, like a couple dollars worth of finishing materials. Mm -hmm. This is almost all revenue here. So. Yeah, which is, which is really impressive. And there's a time component too, of course. Of course. But you know, while the Glowforge is working away, cutting all of these earrings out, you can be working on your online store, communicating with your customers, or maybe you're adding the finishing touches to the other batch that you just printed a second ago too. You know, and here's an example that Bailey's holding up right now of that sheet. This one doesn't have the little studs cut out of it, but if you notice these little spaces here in between all of those earrings, we noticed that as scrap material, and so we picked these flower studs from the catalog and added those to that sheet. So uh, we were able to use that even is more of actually that actually tip number nine, is use every bit of material with live preview. So if we were to stick this in the bed of the Glowforge right now. We could show you. Yeah, the camera in the lid takes a photo of the material, shows us a live preview of what we have available to print on. So even though you look at this and say, well, like most of it's printed on, there's there's money to be made from mm -hmm. this piece of scrap. 100%, so, yeah, show let's them. Let's show what that looks like real quick. So as you can see, we just open the lid, we just throw it in there. Uh, I'm sharing my screen right now. Uh, I'm not gonna give you a complete overview of the app, but for those of you out there who aren't familiar, this is what the Glowforge interface looks like. And here we can see on my screen that piece of material that Bailey just put in. And live preview speaks to this specific element of this feature, which I love. It's one of my favorites. Now I have a design here that we're going to print later on. I'm just going to move it off to the Spoiler, side. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> but I noticed these little ribbon pieces probably fit really nicely down here. Look, look in the that. bottom. You see this? So I can drag and drop that, put it right there, and then we can copy and paste that. And get another one right here. Copy and paste those two and get another one. And you see how quickly I can start to build that up and use every single little tiny piece of that material. So you can work super efficiently with Glowforge. I love that. That's, I, I know we have a lot of customers who care about you know being efficient with their materials, with their, with their money for materials, and right. for the ecosystem and everything. So mm -hmm. um, love it. All right, number eight tip is that you can offer, offer customized products that your customers cannot get anywhere else using either Trace 
or Magic Canvas. Those mm -hmm. are kind of two really like special secret sauces that we have here yeah, at Glowforge right? now. All baked into Glowforge yeah. Premium that mm -hmm. we talked about briefly before. Uh, and Magic Canvas is actually really pretty new. I don't know if any of you out there joined us for our last live stream. Wow, it feels like five days ago. Maybe it was, Maybe it was one two month weeks? ago. One month ago. I think it was the beginning okay. of February. All right, or at the amazing. Of March. Yeah. Well, that there is a uh, how do we how do I even describe it? <laughs> you type what you want Glowforge to make, and it produces a piece of art that you can then add to anything that you like. And we experimented with a whole bunch of different things, and we've got a few examples here. But just one of them that we can show you is right behind Bailey. Oh. These robot coasters. Oh yeah. I think this is what we have here. Mm -hmm. Now I don't remember exactly what we typed in to get to these. But we basically just kept pressing make more coasters uh, in the Make Magic uh, uh, feature. Oh. And it, oh, that's a, that was a Corgi Tea Party if coaster. If you watch <laughs> our live stream from last month, so the Magic Canvas tool is essentially an AI image generator, and we told it to create a Corgi Tea Party, and this and is it what did. we made, and it's the cutest <laughs> thing. So, so custom artwork like this that just comes out of a fun idea in your head, and mm -hmm. perhaps you're not you know, an artist that can whip that out um, either by yeah. hand or digitally. Mm -hmm. That's Magic Canvas. Super cool. And you can sell the images that it creates. And then do we have an example of Trace sitting here? I don't know if uh, we do. Yeah, the oh, inside yeah. of that red wallet. Perfect. Yeah. So Trace is a different feature with Glowforge where you can place a written or typed or whatever piece of, you know, paper into the Glowforge and it basically digitizes the images for you there. So my favorite application for something like that is handwritten notes to add some sentimental value to say this leather wallet mm -hmm. so this is a cool wallet it's got um some london landmarks on it and so it's leather it's engraved this is probably all glowforge made it is yeah all um, handmade too and here it says in it says we love you dad savannah and august and this is in handwriting and you could have written this by hand and then engraved your own handwriting on leather wood whatever to be you know kept forever right. so special kids drawings i feel like are the ultimate like oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a really good example of that yeah. too actually yeah kids drawings their first handwriting the first time they write i love you dad that kind of thing uh, maybe you have some nostalgic things left from your grandparents mm. i know recipes on cutting boards have been oh. a real big thing over the glowforge history yeah the uh -huh. recipes on cutting boards yep. or the um we have a friend who has the dance ticket, the oh, dance yeah. card from the night her <laughs> grandparents met. And so she she put it in Glowforge and created Christmas ornaments for the family of the dance card from their grandparents' first dance. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. It's so, so <laughs> yeah, cool. Incredible. Yeah, incredible. Uh, and you can use that for other things too, not just sort of sentimental things. Let's say you've got a business and you have a business card with a logo. If you don't have the graphic for that logo, you can stick your business card in here, scan it, take that logo, and then put it on other things. So cool. Real easy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think um, another really cool way to use Trace is if you wanted to bring your Glowforge to a party, a, a fair where you're selling things, a market sort of thing, and have people live design or live customize on the spot. Yeah, I mean, which ooh, like we could use this trick. as an example for that, oh, right? Yeah. Like this is a tag here that we were making earlier on. Um, I was speaking to Ellen. She was saying that Easter basket tags are a real big thing. Um, but this particular one here has got a little ribbon um, that has somebody's name uh, on it. I'm yeah, not sure how well you can it see it. But essentially, you could pre-print this entire thing, assemble it, except for that engraved name, have them ready at your booth, people can pick a color, pick a style, then just have them write on a post-it note with a Sharpie the name, uh, and then you stick it in the Glowforge, trace it and print it. It probably takes, what, three to four minutes, something like right, that. Right, just for the engraved little right? bit. Just that experience alone. Oh, They're just... gonna remember that forever. Your social media is gonna blow up because they're gonna start taking photographs it's and sharing that kind of stuff. It's a real wow moment when you is. go from handwriting to engraved mm -hmm. on something that's gonna last forever. It's, yeah. it's awesome. I One of my favorite Glowforge features for <laughs> sure. Uh, I Sorry, Ellen, I know you're handling questions, but I just happened to <laughs> pop over and see a question. Yes, the earring holder, the whole shebang was made on Glowforge. Not um, from one sheet. Not from one sheet. So <laughs> these big sheets in the back that have that pegboard pattern mm -hmm. that um, we've created, those are uh, huge sheets that are specifically designed for the Pro Pass-Through. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a Glowforge Pro that we have here right now. It's our most popular model. It's the, the highest end. We have Basic, Plus, and Pro. Um, the Pro's extra special feature is a slot that goes from the front to the back, and you can slide a big piece of material through to create big things like displays, signage, um, art. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. Uh, furniture. People get very creative. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I'm seeing a preview of what we're sharing right now, and the captions are censoring the pass through slot. Which oh! is so but it's right here. Oh, it's if right you here. have closed caption on, <laughs> yes, then uh, the so captions this, are. There we go. Okay. All right. I can see it now. If but essentially, you can take your material. <laughs> 
<laughs> slide it in the front, it comes out the back, and you basically print a section, then move a little bit, print the next bit, move a little bit, print the next bit, and software takes care of all the alignment. Yeah, everything. so if you're wanting to print big things, consider getting a Glowforge Pro. Again, the Glowforge Pro is part of our new Sell Your Best bundle, mm -hmm. and that launches today. So today's the first time it's available. If you want to see all the details, you can go to glowforge.com slash sell your best bundle. But basically it's a bundle of products that we designed for a new Glowforge owner who wants to make money with Glowforge right away. So it's got your Glowforge Pro, it's got your access to premium with those cool features we just talked about, and then $500 of proof grade credit. And like Nick mentioned, you're gonna get 20% off of proof grade materials while you're a premium member. Mm -hmm. So it's like a double, Double dipping, if you will. Yeah, it's, I mean, really <laughs> Love is, it. great. Yeah, uh -huh. so that's available um, just this month. And if you uh, got an email to invite you to this stream, I will also email you the link um, to this afterwards. All right, Fantastic. let's get back to our tips, though. We're almost at the print. Okay, exciting. All right, number seven is that you can actually stop outsourcing. Many of the items that you needed to outsource for your business, um, you could make your own blanks. You could make your own packaging. You can yeah. make your own business cards. A lot of things that you might have been buying from other folks, you can now make yourself. Absolutely. And rubber stamps is a really good example. Oh, we have that. one of these here. Yeah. Um, this is great if you're a crafter, you know, if you like that kind of thing. Um, but as a business owner, to be able to make this kind of thing, to produce that handmade look for your packaging uh, and for your presentation, I mean, these things, they're not cheap, especially if you want something sure. custom, and especially if you want something big. But a sheet of this laser safe rubber is probably only 10 or $15. And you can fit, well, maybe anything from five to 20 stamps on one sheet. Yeah. Looks like we got a question yeah. from Alan. Williamsburg Hair Girl on Instagram <laughs> asked about hairstylist business cards. Uh, what kind of business cards have you seen Glowforge donors make? Absolutely, yeah. Ooh. I've seen, so Glowforge can cut paper, so you can get something like a card stock. And since you can cut or engrave, if it's a colored card stock, you could engrave your font, kind of like using an ink printer, yeah. but, mm -hmm. um, but, but just engrave. But you can also do really cool kind of like negative space effects. You know what I mean? So with hair, imagine that you had, you know, the outline of a, a curling iron or something like that and a, and a cord that wraps around your whole thing and it could be a negative space that a laser would have cut. Uh -huh. yeah. Just thinking out loud too, if you really want to go ham, thinking about hair, um, you could create a comb or something similar <laughs> to a comb that you can use within the hair. It may be, and forgive me, I'm not, I'm not that knowledgeable about <laughs> hair tools and things like this, but uh, I, I know there are various things that are essentially flat pieces of plastic yeah. arranged in certain ways to hold the hair in certain ways. And actually, you can cut and engrave that stuff right here on oh, the golf yeah. course to create a business card that actually has a purpose, which I was like. Like one I of those pocket great. combs that there you can make yeah. from acrylic mm -hmm. and then it could be a, a useful functional pocket comb but could also be a business card. That's yeah. a super fun idea, right. I love that. And um, when we get onto one of our customer business stories later, um, she has some cool acrylic hair accessories that I know you didn't ask for hair accessories, but wait till you see them. <laughs> okay, so we um, are we going to cover packaging again? Oh, we are. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure we are going to, but yes, outsourcing can also include, that. I wanted to mention things like blanks. A lot of people who have like an engraving machine, they'll buy like, you know, 200 wooden coasters or things like that, but mm -hmm. you could just make your own with the Glowforge. Yeah, it eliminates yeah. that whole that whole step. So I think a lot of like cricket owners, for example, will buy uh, shapes cut from wood or plastic oh, yeah. and then apply vinyl or soft adhesive materials to that that they can cut on their cricket. Um, Glowforge can cut the wood as well as the the, yep. uh, the paper materials too. So it's pretty easy for you to do the whole thing by yourself. And we actually have customers that ended up transitioning their entire business <laughs> to making just blanks for yeah. other people uh, because. It it was such a lucrative field. Yeah, and you can get, you could get creative with it if you're making blanks for yourself. You can mm -hmm. skew away from what everyone is, else is able to buy in bulk, make right. yours a little more intricate, yeah, a little yeah. different, that this, kind of thing. This thing is so fast, you can react really quickly oh. to demand too. So you can effectively <laughs> batch produce rather than mass produce, just do a few at a time. It might be five, it might be 500, depends on what your customers are looking for. But yeah, if you see a trend or something like oh, that, jump like, on it. Remember, everyone remembers the picture of Bernie Sanders sitting in the chair. <laughs> That's that it. was up on people's Etsy stores yeah. the next day on all the products, you know? It was and amazing. People, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Entrepreneurs act fast. All right, so number six tip, let's get to it, is that you can sell designs straight from the Glowforge catalog. So we're gonna show you today the catalog, we'll pick something, we'll print it, and we'll show you how much we could price and make um, by making just a sheet's worth of these. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I figured I could probably show you a couple of tips and tricks along the way as well. Maybe some things you already know, maybe some things you don't, uh, but I'm hoping I can help you think just a little outside the box in terms yep. of using these catalog designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I'm gonna talk you through this process and show you as much as I can. So here we are, Glowforge catalog. Like it says, thousands of ready to gift designs. They're ready to print. They're also ready to sell, which is pretty exciting. Uh, now, a lot of these designs actually come from Glowforge owners. Uh, customers create these things, they submit them, uh, we help people prepare the files, and then you can actually earn commission as people download and print these prints, which is pretty exciting. So that's another interesting way to make some money with your Glowforge. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, given that we're coming up to sort of Easter season, I figured we'd do a little search for this, and I'll show you this little design that I was working on earlier. I am really wowed by all the new designs on here. I guess I haven't been on in a while, and we've really ramped up how many new we're right? uploading. For for a while, it felt like there was the same couple hundred, and now I think we have really We are like thousands wow. and thousands yeah. and thousands of quite <laughs> wow, specific wow. things. There's Not a that I printed those everything. couple hundred, but gosh, I have a lot of <laughs> options now, yeah. Uh, now, this one here that I'm highlighting right now is the one that I used to create that Harper gift tag that I just showed you, but... Um, if I go up to the top here and search for egg instead, we actually have a whole bunch of other ones. Um, somebody, I'm assuming this is probably the same designer, has submitted a whole bunch of variations of different egg designs that you can use for decor, for packaging, for things. And I was thinking one of these could work pretty well for tags. And I there happened to pick are. this one just the other day. All we have to do is click on it and open it up. And as you can see, with your premium membership, this design is absolutely free. And we can click to download and open it right there, and it opens it right in your dashboard. Now, we're actually going to jump ahead to the Glowforge app here uh, and look back at this situation. You might remember it from a few moments ago, uh, but this is where we do all of our kind of design work for Glowforge. Now, this, I kind of feel, is it's a compositing tool. You can bring designs in from all different places. It might be handwriting like we talked about uh, earlier on with the trace feature. It might be designs from the catalog. It can be things that you scan all sorts of different things. Just to zoom us way out, because I, I feel like we show this screen and it looks like like Battlestar Galactica Command or something <laughs> like It doesn't look, I don't know what it looks like. But this is a picture of the bed of the Glowforge with this sheet of scrap that we put in it. Yeah, so, I'm going to change it so it's a so little Nick's easier for you to see. So putting in a brand new sheet now, so you'll see the view that we just saw change. Uh -huh. So there's a camera right in. here. And, or I don't think you can see my finger from the view that we're showing <laughs> now, but I promise I'm pointing to a, a camera, right? <laughs> Here, no. When we close the lid, we could show the top, right I suppose. There, there, there it is. There so it is. when I close, <laughs> it's going to take ooh, a photo Oop. of the bed. And then from Nick's screen, basically, we're seeing kind of a, like, a, a, not quite a fisheye, but a wide lens as if you were much higher and can see the whole piece of material and be able to use every little bit of it. There we go. And so there's, there's our material there, there uh, ready to print and ready for me to drag and drop my design wherever I want it to go. And just so you can see, I'm going to move this thing that I've been working on here right onto there. And then I'm just going to very quickly choose my material. And I'm going to show you how I got from this egg shape to a tag that we can add somebody's name to using some premium tools. Now, you'll notice this is just a standard egg shape. There's no place to add a ribbon or string or anything like that. So that's the first thing that we need. To do that, I'm going to use the shape tools. I'm going to grab a circle. I'm going to move this and resize it, pop it towards the top like this. I'll zoom in so you can see as well as you can. Now I want to connect these things together and have a little outline around them. So I'm going to use the outline tool, which is this one right here. Again, built into premium, create a new outline here. And it defaults to about six millimeters, but we can adjust this to be whatever we want. I think that's a little bit too heavy, to be honest. So I'm going to go down to, uh, let's say two millimeters here. I just correct that number, press enter, it updates. And there we have our design. This outline tool to is so cool. There it is. All the time. I tried to learn. <laughs> I tried everyone <laughs> I did. I tried to learn how to do this skill in several different design programs. And as, as not a designer with cut in capital letters, um, it was really hard and it felt like the design programs would like update. And then there was a whole different way that I had to know how to do it. It was just this skill. No, I mean, yes, right. <laughs> this exactly. Is, yeah. This is worth it to me right here. Right here. Premium. And yeah. it's absolutely true. Bailey makes a great point. <laughs> All of this stuff you can do in other bits of software. Mm -hmm. If you already have software skills, then maybe premium isn't the right package for you. But even for me, someone who is, I would say, pretty skilled in things like Adobe Illustrator, mm -hmm. it's sometimes just way quicker to do it right He's here in the, the app. one of the people that it's... taught me several times how to do it in other programs. <laughs> 
<laughs> she was a good student. She really was. But, you, you know, these things are tricky. Yeah. Um, but anyway, just to explain my vision here. So we got our egg from the catalog. This is the piece that we downloaded. We just created this outline here using the premium tools. And what we're going to do is cut them out of separate pieces, and then we're going to layer them on top of each other like this, so we can create something that's multidimensional. And we can paint this bit. We can even cut it out of a different material if we want. Mm -hmm. Now, I do need to add a circle back in the top here, which is going to be for our string. So let's just grab that tool. We'll just drag that around like this, make it the right size. For those of you who are interested, if you want to, we can work accurately here too. We've got a little ruler tool down here, and we can specify whatever size we actually want for these features. Oh, yeah. Um, so you do have that control if you need to. And then I think for a finishing touch, let's add a ribbon so we can add somebody's name. And I'm going to click the plus. Here we have access to, I think it's 3 million oh, different icons and graphics. It's kind of like clip art. There's super yeah. printable clip art. I mean, and it has everything. Absolutely everything. So I typed in ribbon here for this example. I'm going to pick this one. We click, it adds it right to our dashboard right here so it's ready to go. I'm going to take advantage of the outline tool one more time as well. So let's drag around that. Click outline, create a new one. I'm going to guess it's a little bit too big. Yep, it is. Let's make it a bit smaller. And you can see how quickly this goes. This process is very, very straightforward. Now, one thing you might notice as well is that ribbon right now is showing up in blue. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that this, uh, this piece of art is by default set to be engraved. And I don't want that. I want this to be an outline. Uh, so I'm going to use something called a score, which is like a cut, but it doesn't go all the way through the material. And to change it, all I do is select it. I go over to the left here, which represents all the different print steps of my print. And I find the one that's highlighted. You can see it right here. And I just click into it and change that to a score. I got a couple of options. I'm going to choose high quality right here. Click away, and that's that ready to go. Now I, I can group these two, so I'm going to do that. A comment in uh, in the chat that we that the machine didn't recognize the material. That's because we did something sneaky and put in a piece of material that doesn't have a QR code on it. So, <laughs> but we knew what kind it was, so we selected it. But if it had a QR code, the machine would have registered that and it just popped up to that upper left-hand side. You can see where it says light cherry plywood. He just manually selected that. So, if you had cherry plywood that you mm -hmm. were sourcing from the craft store that's not proof grade, you could see how that setting works on your material and choose to use that or save your own custom setting for the material that you pr prefer. Absolutely. And as well uh, as, as well as that, the label, the QR code on your material is relatively big. It sits in this corner here. And we don't want you to not use that piece of your material. You are at some point going to cut through it. You're going to destroy that QR code. It's totally fine. When that happens, all you have to do, hit into that menu, choose a material, Yep. Everything else is the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and so here we have our design ready to go. I'm going to quickly choose some text. Uh, what should we do? Oscar for this one? Love it. That's there the Boston go. Terrier at the dog park that I go to. Perfect. So. So there we go. I like that. Uh, and we have access to um, thousands and thousands of fonts in here, too, as you might expect. We can pick anything and everything to keep it quick. I'm just going to choose this one right here. But I'm also going to dig into here really quick, because we've got text effects, too. So we can add a little bit of personality to Oscar's name. Uh, there's lots of different options here. But because of the ribbon I chose that has a slight uh, sort of slant to it, let's do this gentle up skew. We can then go to Options, and we can change the values that are in here, too, and sort of start to manipulate exactly how much skew we want. And we can, of course, size Oscar's name appropriately, too and start to move it around. And this is the kind of thing that you can do live at your craft fair. And so here we oh, have yeah. the tag. That could sit somewhere like this on the bottom of there. So that's pretty much our design ready to go. And just to speak to what we were talking about earlier about getting the most out of a piece of material, here's an example where I took that same design and just very quickly organized these pieces so they all fit onto one sheet. And this, I think we counted how many, Bailey? Was it 18? 16, like I think. 16? Yeah. And then we looked on Etsy and saw that these are selling for about 10 anywhere bucks a from piece? like, yeah, 8 to $12 for a little custom Easter egg or carrot or something right? like that for, for Easter time. Yeah. So, yeah, you could, in, in theory, if you did 16 on here, mm -hmm. $10 each, that's 160 bucks. And then minus the cost of the material and any finishing materials, but yeah, that's not much. It's not significant, absolutely. Uh, and so, just to finish this off, let's actually kick off this print. Now, I think Mike told me that I should aim for the top right-hand corner, which is above the label up here. Now, I would normally work a bit more efficiently with the material, but I want you to be able to see. So I'm going to oh, pop it right I see. here. Print there so that the camera can pick it up. The yes, best. I yeah, see. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, thanks to live preview, we can see everything that's going to be in there. 
So we got our uh, cut and score for our engrave. We have our cuts, cuts. I'm just checking that our settings right. That looks good to me. Let's hit print and that's it. That's all we have to do. Look at that. And of course, there was a lot of talking there. <laughs> if I was quiet and just clicked a few buttons and did it, you could spin that whole idea up in probably three to five minutes, something like that. Yep. And of course, you've got thousands of catalog designs to play with. You can take these ideas, you can make them your own, you can add that customization. Uh, it's really fun. Yeah. It makes it really easy. Yeah. Okay. All right, so after a little bit of processing, uh, this all gets sent up to the cloud. Our button lights up. There's only one button on the Glowforge, as you probably noticed. Uh, this particular print, including the engrave, which is the long bit, is 2 minutes 44. Oh, so wow. So it doesn't take a lot quick. to do this. Yeah, it really is quite fast. Again, it speaks to that prototyping yeah. ability, right? Really quick to prototype these things. Great. So go ahead. Okay, here I go. That's it. <laughs> awesome. That's so fun. I, I think it's really exciting how there's so many sellable designs in the catalog. So even if you... I mean, some people love the idea of making things to sell with a Glowforge, but they're overwhelmed by what? And so it's like, right. just leave that out and figure out what you'd like to make exactly. and what, what the people that you have mm -hmm. to sell to like. And um, yeah, I yeah. mean, there's and, all that for you. I mean, inevitably, your skills are going to grow as well with sure. this machine. And that's the cool thing about it. It grows with you. This thing is capable of so much more than most of us are able to extract from it. So as you make more things, as you learn more skills, as customers approach you with commissions, like you are going to change the way that you make and your skills will grow as well. Exactly. Um, okay, we are at about 11.30. I wanted to see, it looks like some new people have joined us since we started. So I wanted to I, mention, <laughs> hello, hello. So we are going through, if you, if you are joining us late, um, you can like rewind this and watch from the beginning. You can watch it once You're not late, over. by the way. That wasn't... Late? You're late. <laughs> How dare you? We started at 11, so there's about 30 minutes of tips, but we just got through tip six of 10 mm -hmm. of ways to make money with your Glowforge. Um, and we also have a special Glowforge bundle for those of you who don't yet have a Glowforge printer. So that launches today. It's called the Sell Your Best Bundle. You can check out all the details at glowforge.com slash sell your best bundle, but it's a Glowforge Pro a year of premium, $500 gift card for proof grade materials. So mm -hmm. you can choose which materials you want. Um, and it also includes shipping. So it's a really great deal. And there is, I mean, it's uh, still time to get, there's, there's always still time because there's so many different <laughs> selling seasons. There's a great summer market season. There's a great holiday market season. Mm -hmm. But there's also just folks who make money year round on Etsy. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, people always have birthdays. Oh, people yeah. always have anniversaries. Yes. And there's always some kind of seasonal event, too. Oh, yeah. You know, spring is coming up. People are doing plant markers, uh, anything for outside in the oh, garden, yeah. that kind of decor. Yeah. Lots yeah. of opportunity. Absolutely. So if you're looking to get a Glowforge, now could be the time. I actually think that Sell You Best landing page has the live stream on there too. Yes. I think that's right. Yeah. So if you have missed the beginning of this and you want to rewatch it, go to that same landing page. Oh, You'll be able to rewatch we'll it right, right there. there. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So tip number five is branding, packaging, mm. signage, and displays are all things that you can accomplish with your Glowforge. Uh, I buy a ton of stuff from Etsy. Oh, like mm -hmm. I got married, it's been a few years now, but I bought almost all the decor that I didn't make myself. I bought from Etsy and wow, you could really tell the difference of the store fronts that put the effort into their brand. For sure. And I found uh -huh. myself buying from them and again and again. Uh, one of them was even in Russia, but I just like loved her <laughs> work so her much. Aesthetic, it was yeah. worth, the, worth the extra yeah. shipping. And yeah, so, so we have a couple examples mm -hmm. of packaging and displays and stuff back here. We've got this um, large display. So at the beginning we talked about like all of the ear earrings on here were made with one piece of proof grade. Mm -hmm. Right here. You can see some of our scrap. And the, but the big pieces behind, that's also proof grade material. That is available at shop.glowforge.com, that pass through size material. I saw someone asking where they can get that, that giant oversized material. Um, but if you, so if you look at this, um, this display we've made, a cool backlit effect that I, I mean, how, how complex was that to make, Nick? So that was um, an LED strip that plugs into USB. So the same thing you have in your computer. Yeah. I bought it off an online store, probably Amazon. Yeah. I think it was about $5. It comes with a remote control with way too many buttons, <laughs> but you can change the color and make it fade and all that kind of stuff. And this is just a piece of plywood with a piece of thick acrylic. And I just wrapped the LED strip around the back of it. 
It's like, if you look at the side, it's kind of janky, but it looks really good from the front, yep. right? It's very, very simple to do. You can do it. I love it. And I, just something like this really elevates your look. It's going to make you stand out and look like you know what you're doing at any right? in-person event. Yeah, it's um, not as difficult as you might imagine. And I, this one's interesting too. Oh yeah, Sorry. this guy. So this one, I'm going to have to unplug it just to show you. But this is actually a base that you can buy, <laughs> uh, again, online. It's for what you call edge-lit acrylic. And this is essentially what this is. This is just a piece of acrylic that we engrave the surface of. And you stick it in there. And there's basically some lights in the bottom. And when you turn it on, oh, maybe? maybe you have to plug it in. Oh, it I thought, plugs in. Yeah, I yeah. thought it had batteries. Oh, it could charge. Yeah. Not that one, wrong. but probably there are There probably ones. is one, yeah, exactly. And that has a QR code. So QR code. Gosh, that's one thing the pandemic brought back to life, right? wasn't it? Was the uh -huh. QR code. So uh, I think we've been trying to make the QR code happen since like 2012, <laughs> but it finally happened in 2020. And so if that was me and you scanned that QR code, I'd have um, it linked to a link tree page where you could access my store and right. my Instagram and yeah, maybe, maybe my blog, a mailing whatever list, else that kind of thing. A mailing mm -hmm. list. Yeah, yeah, great idea. Really easy. Um, and again, you can generate those online and they just output as an SVG, print it on your Glowforge. It's right there, ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you committed to your pricing here because you engraved it, but you could also do this as uh, interchangeable pieces so yeah. that you mm -hmm. could update the pricing. You could still do that. You could glue new pricing over that. Yeah. Or you could mm -hmm. do kind of a whiteboard effect. If you're going to use acrylic, you could, maybe you're doing a menu where you're going to sub in flavors every week. And so you're not going to print a, a new idea. sign. Yeah. yeah, you could uh -huh. do whiteboard. Um, here's another really fun project. This is a throwback, isn't it? Yes, this is <laughs> Jerry the Draft. This is a little, um, <laughs> kit that you might buy online. Like, you know, those little craft kits. Again, the pandemic was doing a lot of things oh, yeah, like this. Absolutely. So this mm -hmm. is a finished one and this is a one that you see on the shelf. So all of this is created with Glowforge. So it's a little yeah. wooden yeah. figurine that you can kind of cross stitch into. So yeah. it could be kind of an early cross stitching activity. Does it stand? Creates a, I don't think so. <laughs> no, oh, that's a, shame. a little too skinny. <laughs> Creates a little, a little guy wearing a sweater. Uh -huh. But this packaging is just made with this white cardboard and Look, I'm trying not to cut off his head. Look how cool that is. Isn't and it's it great? got enough um, thickness that it could sit on a hook. Yeah, you could make it stand up if you wanted to. You can mm -hmm. customize it to however you are, like store displays things, of course. Um, but we have the, the same shape of the giraffe, the same design file, in fact, used to cut this out, plus a couple of decorative details. It fits in there really securely, so there's no, no need to use those horrible like twist ties or tape or anything like that. that. Oh, yeah, like just a, like a, right? just a pressure fit. Just a little fit. bit of friction. Friction yeah. fit, there you mm -hmm. go. Here's another, um, this is from the, the Blot brand that we've made <laughs> yeah. up, but how cool is that? Just a, a simple cardboard yeah, backer, yeah. but it's uh, so like on brand, looks someone, so cool, really makes the product pop. Someone was asking about uh, business cards earlier on too. Oh, yeah. And you gotta remember that Glowforge cut and engrave. So these Blot things here, uh, we were able to create a custom shape one. as well as a custom design on the actual uh, material itself, which was all in one step. So cool. Hey, these, got, these match my outfit like really well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks like we have a question. <laughs> Karina has a question from YouTube about the air filter. Uh, they want to know how you're connecting the air filter and how it works. So let's see. <laughs> wow. Here is, here is an air filter. <laughs> Let us show you one. <laughs> so we have ours like hidden under the table so you don't get to see the, the, uh, the hose and all that kind of stuff. But that is the air filter about the size of a recycle bin. It has a cartridge inside which is replaceable when it gets full. Um, it entirely depends on what you're printing on as to how quickly uh, it fills up. If you're doing mostly acrylics, it's filtering out smell rather than particles. So the filter lasts a really long time. If it's wood, it can fill up a little bit more yep. quickly. Um, but it just has one knob on the front. You turn it just to turn it on. As it gets full, you turn that knob a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Once it gets to the end, you know your cartridge is full, you replace it. Um, just takes a normal um, 110 volt plug, same as your Glowforge. And it means you can set this thing up anywhere. You could be in the woods. If you have Wi-Fi and power, <laughs> you could put your Glowforge in the woods. Or maybe more appropriate to what we're talking about today, you could take your Glowforge to a craft fair. Yeah. And you could exhaust all of the smoke and the particulates that come from this right there at your booth so everybody is safe. Yeah. Uh, and more importantly, you can wow your customers yeah, uh, with I've, your prints. I've hooked up Glowforge printers in, you know, a basement in a little five by five little booth. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I've tethered a Glowforge to my phone for yep. the Wi-Fi. Like you really can bring them on the road if you just know know what you need, which is really just the air filter, yeah. and then it's quite a self-contained little system. Mm -hmm. um, all right, tip number four. We've kind of been mentioning this, but mm -hmm. something to keep in mind is 
the, an equation when you're figuring out what to sell. Focusing on some combination of low cost materials, quick prints, and very little finishing. So something that's a low cost material, a quick print, and very little finishing, that's probably a lower value item mm -hmm. that you can't make as much margin from. So it's like, which of those do you keep low and which do we make high end to really make that money? So for example, a higher cost material, like maybe you're engraving on uh, thick, gorgeous marble cutting boards that you buy for $40 a piece, but it's a quick, it's a quick print and it's very little finishing. So the, the margin dollars are all there. So just figuring out where you want to invest either the time or the money in materials or finishing and looking at the profit you can get from that. Yeah, yeah. And reflecting on Proofgrade really quickly too, and thinking about this print that we just did, I did all three of these pieces on a piece of plywood. And my intention there was we could take the decorative part, yeah, this like egg <laughs> bit that's right here, and we could just spritz it with a bit of spray paint, um, and we could add some color there really, really quickly. Wow, look at that. That was, we should have saved that for Ellen. <laughs> a satisfying lift. Oh, yes. <laughs> when, when prints have like lots of little pieces that fall out, lifting it out, I mean, that could be its own TikTok channel, just like satisfying right? Glowforge lifts, yes. <laughs> now, I'm just peeling this off because we talked about that paper here earlier on. And then this would sit here. So let's see if you can see that. Here. That would go there, absolutely. But of course, if you peel that paper off, you've got Just the beautiful like cherry material behind it. But that's still looking kind of bland, right? Mm -hmm. So what if you took one of the uh, pieces of proof grade acrylic? Um, that's what these are right here. These ones we've used for other projects. So they've been peeled. That's why you don't see the, uh, the actual paper there. Right. Um, but you could use any one of these colors to print, say, this middle layer right here. Uh, and then, like Bailey said, very little finishing required because the color's already there. And then you and can you make just... double because you're using two sheets, so yep. do one of the sheets the backs, one of the sheets the fronts, mm -hmm. and uh, they can 32 of them yeah. instead of 16. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right, our number three tip, we've touched on this a few times because I just think it's such a good tip and I have done it myself, is <laughs> customizing items in your shop or bringing them to a fair. So what I mean by that is having your Glowforge in a retail space where folks can interact with it and engrave. That's not engrave something on the spot. That's not right for everybody's business. Some people run home-based businesses where they wouldn't dream of moving their Glowforge because it is heavy and it's a whole thing to move it. Mm -hmm. But sure. if, if you are at a fair, I feel like this is something that can really make your booth stand out. If you did the work, for example, of printing that whole thing except for the name mm -hmm. Oscar, yeah. and then it's like pick your own and customize. People love that kind of thing, and the on the spot, it's just kind of a party trick that, trust me, I've, I've run Glowforge printers for <laughs> days of my life straight at public events, and people just want to watch it print. It's awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, we used to have queues at Make It Fair for three hours yes. plus, right? I yeah, mean, maybe some of seriously. you have seen us at them before, but yes. <laughs> people are really interested. Um, and I mean, we've all been to craft fairs, right? Those booths that have some kind of interactive element to them, it may be as simple as tasting, something mm -hmm. like that those draw the crowds and the crowds draw more people and then all of a sudden before you know it you sold out in midday and yeah. <laughs> you have to my, go home early. My favorite way I've seen this used is if you maybe you are an artist like a paper and pen sort of artist or you could consider hiring an artist um, to come and interact with individuals and draw a custom piece of art whether it's a cartoon or a calligraphy or whatever and then print those on the spot. I mean that's a great idea. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah yeah. And this is all about community too. Yep. I mean, what a great way of forming relationships with other sellers so you can benefit each other. Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, I love that. Um, all right, we're getting down to it. Uh, our number two tip is that most business owners choose the Glowforge Pro. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned we do have a, a Glowforge Basic and a Glowforge Plus, but the Glowforge Pro is our best-selling machine, not only among just folks who want to use a Glowforge as a hobby at home, but especially among those who want to make money. Mm -hmm. um, it prints th about three times, I think it's, yeah, three times faster mm -hmm. than a basic, I think about two times faster than a pro, or excuse me, a plus. So if you are really, um, you know, working out the equation of how much time can you spend printing on a given day to, uh, to produce the amount of inventory you need, to make the amount of money that you've set your goals to print, to, to sell off, excuse me, to 
pay off your Glowforge in a certain amount of time, you can kind of figure that out by saying, okay, like each item takes this many minutes mm -hmm. to print, this many minutes to finish, this much revenue, and there you go. Yeah. And the pro is gonna be the, the best bang for your buck there in terms of it's gonna get your projects done the fastest. Not to mention the pass-through slot. Yep. So if you missed uh, us talk about the pass-through slot before, something like this display, um, these two back sheets are pass-through size material. That means that they're like three or four or six feet long and they actually can pass from the front to the back of the Glowforge um, so you can print a giant sign, decor, furniture, that sort of thing. Yeah. Really lets you supersize all your ideas. Yeah? Absolutely. So that's, yeah, that's, that's the pro. That's the pro. Um, I was trying to think if there's anything you missed, but I think you covered all of it. And to be clear, the Pro has the same printing capabilities as the Basic and Plus. Like, they can all do the same materials. It's just the Pro is a bit faster, and then mm -hmm. that pass-through really allows you to do those bigger ideas. Yeah. Um, all, right. all right. We're getting down to our last tip, which is just, as you can see, many of you may not have seen a Glowforge in person. Here it is. Bailey and Nick for scale. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's We're normal-sized people. Yeah, we are. We're yeah. <laughs> Um, it's pretty compact and easy to clean and maintain mm -hmm. at home. So at home, I keep my Glowforge like two feet to my right. So I'm sitting on my computer. My Glowforge is right here, especially around the holiday season. Sometimes I'm pressing print like while I'm also on email and right? stuff. And Absolutely. I don't have an air filter. I just vent mine right out the window. Mm -hmm. um, and that works great for me. Yeah, a lot of people do that. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. we see folks keep them in garages and workshops and craft rooms and you know, kitchens and living rooms, really everything. So yeah, yeah. it doesn't, you don't need like a warehouse space to have a laser in your home. And maintenance is really simple. Bailey mentioned that, but there's just a couple of places to wipe when they get a bit of dust on them, which is where the laser passes through. But you should see the printers that we have here in the studio. <laughs> We've had them for four or five years. They print nonstop. They are gross. Crusty. <laughs> oh, they are gross. I've been promising Ellen an oddly satisfying like cleaning video oh, yeah. of one of those. I will get around to it. So you will see firsthand on the Glowforge accounts in the future oh, yeah. just how gross they can get and how well they still work. Yeah. Yep. Some people do like to keep their machines like in tip top shape all the time. The best tip I've ever seen is just having one of those tiny little like hand back next to your mm -hmm. machine and, and um, just like vacuing down the whole thing, like getting, it just gets kind of the dust that the air filter or that the fans inside doesn't grab mm -hmm. and the tiny little those bits. little pieces, yeah. And yeah. then that'll just keep you printing happier for longer. Um, so those were our right. 10 tips. We do have a couple like people who have done it examples that we wanted to make sure we share with you. Um, I think Nick mentioned right at the beginning. So Nick and I have been at Glowforge for like going on eight years each. And Whew. so that means when we started, the Glowforge had not yet shipped to anyone. And when it did, we got to meet the first people who had them and see like how they turned their ideas into reality. And one of those people that was one of our first customers to get the Glowforge mm -hmm. in hand and really like start a business with it was um, Ryan with Light Razor Designs. He's here in Seattle, so we had the pleasure of meeting him in person a few times. Um, and his name came up when we were like, who, sh who should we talk about when we're doing the, the live stream? And we said, oh, Ryan. And I went on his website and I couldn't believe it. I was thinking that it's his impressive. website from five years ago, which mm -hmm. was had two products on it or something, but let's, let's just show it now. Yeah, it is a fully fledged, very robust e-commerce platform. Yeah. He has an empire, you might say. And Ryan was an interesting one too, because he bought a Glowforge knowing that he uh, wanted to start a business. He just didn't really know what. Uh, he was a graphic designer previously, and I don't remember exactly how this happened, but he just kind of fell into earrings. And then for a long time, he was selling- I don't think we're showing selling... the screen, Mike. Can we make sure we're showing the screen? Uh, right. <laughs> for a long time, he was selling uh, $10 earrings at uh, one of the local farmer's markets here. It looks like now some of these are priced at $29, $26. Yeah. So he's put his prices up. Um, he's got some other jewelry pieces as well. But I also noticed that he's really branched out into starting to make <gasps> these really cool wall-mounted air plant hangers. And I was on his Instagram too because I wanted to show you this. Like, look at this particular one. This is his booth at... Um, Northwest Flower and Garden Show. Oh, wow. That's my guess at what that might mean. But look how full and impressive that is. He has pegboards similar to us on that back wall full of his earrings. Mm -hmm. And then he has all of those different um, uh, air plant holders on the back there too. Oh, here we go. And there's even stuff on here that I've not seen yet. Uh, so forgive me if I forget to speak because I'm also browsing this for the first time. But look how impressive those things are. And he has a really robust style and a brand. You know it's Ryan's gorgeous. work when you see it. Distinctive. Yeah. yeah. I have one of those hanging ones at home 
uh, from like several years ago, and they're so cool. I think uh, if I can recall the the details of his story, he I think was a I think had a stay at home part time marketing sort of job, but mm -hmm. he and he has kids, and he was able to completely stop any outside job and devote all of his um, energy to this Glowforge powered business, and that's his full time gig now. I think it got much bigger than he yeah expected. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so pretty cool. Um, Let's see, another one that I wanted to, oh, this is this is one of our favorites. We've showed this one for years. We <laughs> try not to play favorites, but this one is um, a, a center called The Fairy Door, and they make fairy doors, which actually I, I feel like are having like a real moment right now. Yeah. Um, these folks, they are a great example of really like knowing your audience because they sell at a lot of Renaissance fairs, and I'm, I'm not sure where they're located, but they have a custom booth that like kind of looks like a fairy hut, but they also have this like, Etsy store that has all these different custom fairy doors. So basically, they have these doors that have different characters, like you saw the dinosaur, a squirrel, mm -hmm. a dragonfly, that sort of thing. They also just have plain doors in different colors. But they use Glowforge in a very unique way, um, a couple ways. They have used the trace feature to capture the texture of wood in antique doors in their travels across Europe, and then, like, scale that down and put it on a mini tiny door. Um, and we have, we have some right yeah, here. Yeah, we have a couple, person. yeah. And they're using what we call is uh, the, th wow. Uh, I'm gonna start <laughs> that engraved. sentence again. 3D yeah. engraved is the feature that they're really capitalizing on with this. Uh, and what's super cool about that is it looks at the photograph that they're giving the printer and it adjusts the level of power based on how dark parts of the image are. So when you see a textured door and you have all those deep crevices and things that are nice and black, mm -hmm. the laser gets really deep in there and it really recreates very, very realistically. And awesome? I was really surprised at this. Really realistically, the texture of that wood. And then once they've made one and they've created these characters, they're really smart about this actually. They create molds and yes. they cast them in resin mm -hmm. so they can then produce them over and over and over again and focus on just the finishing touches like the painting and things like yeah. that. Um, but a really, really cool example yes. of a couple of artists who are doing something very, like arguably pretty niche. Oh but yeah. But being very successful with it too. Yeah, so they sell, like I said, at kind of those Renaissance fantasy festivals and things like that, but then also their Etsy store. And I, I just was peeking at their Instagram the other day, getting ready for this and they were like, we heard what you want, and you wanted the firefly or the, the dragonfly. And so, I mean, they've got people that, requesting. I just showed that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, so I, I love that one. I will be a repeat customer. Um, okay, and then another customer I think is super fun and really just has a unique aesthetic that I love is um, called the Golden Hippie Co. So this is uh, very this is their website right here 70s aesthetic um, if you were on at the beginning there was a question from a hairdresser about business cards and we were like you could make them out of acrylic and make them a comb you can make them a barrette look at these look at these gorgeous acrylic clips I mean that'd be a little pricey because how much is she able to price those at? well that's interesting like some of these are priced at uh, just over 20 this okay. is 21 um, so it looks like our pricing here was maybe just a hair low oh look at this flower um, ones. but yeah oh, these ones are pretty gosh. fun and it looks like she's really capitalizing on colorful, bright, vibrant oh, acrylics yeah. to make these. And let's go to the, the Instagram because there might be some other varieties on here too. Oh yes, yeah, tons of super fun shapes. Look at those sheep with the uh, disco style. Uh, oh my sunglasses. gosh, I just those love really awesome. her aesthetic. Yeah, I talked to Chelsea. She she was so Chelsea from the Golden Hippie Co. is one of the businesses that I profiled in a class I built last year called um, Building a Business with Bailey. I talked to probably, I don't know, 10 or so small mm -hmm. business owners that work with Glowforge for their small business and extracted a bunch of like wisdom and magic from them. So I hope you check that out. I can pop the link into chat. I'll email it too. But it's called Building a Business with Bailey. And Chelsea, I chose her because her aesthetic is so good and so spot on. And I couldn't believe that when I was interviewing her, she actually had a totally different vibe and look for the brand that was softer and more feminine and delicate and I'm like you did and then she pivoted right before she launched and went with this strong colorful brand and it's working for her so I just I think that's such a cool example of I mean it looks like a it looks like a it looks like a well-developed brand that's got a whole team of marketers behind it, right, but it's right. just Chelsea and her creativity and that's her like it. vision for yeah. her brand, and and you can do that too. So. I'm looking here. She even even her sales section of the website is called Disco Discounts. I mean, I mean <laughs> the whole thing ties so cohesively and so nicely into the brand. It's really I impressive. love that. I'm gonna stick that link in chat right now in case that's any of y'all want to see those videos. Um, so. 
That is kind of all we have. We're go yeah. coming up on an hour. Thank you all for sticking with us. This was really fun to have so many people here the whole time. I saw a lot of questions getting answered in chat by um, our Glowforge experts that we had uh, on the chat during during the whole stream. So hopefully you got your questions answered. If you didn't, you can always find us like on social media. Mm -hmm. You can find us at hello at glowforge.com. We have a chat bot on our website. It's my face, but I it is rarely me answering that. I have to I have to be <laughs> honest with you also. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'll be present, Bailey, you know what No, wants. I'm busy. I'm getting ready to do this. Um, so again, before we sign off, I wanted to remind you we have that new bundle that we launched just today. It's only available through the end of the month. And it is specifically designed for people who want to make money with Glowforge. It's called the Sell Your Best Bundle. It's a Glowforge Pro, which is the one we printed on today. And a year of our premium subscription, that includes those catalog designs, mm -hmm. those special tools, um, and a $500 proof grade gift card. So with that package, gosh, <laughs> how many sheets could you buy? How much money could you oh, make with right? just without spending another cent on materials? Mm -hmm. What could you make? I mean, the challenge, I wanna hear it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, with that, it was really awesome to have all of you here today. I wish you all luck in your making money with Glowforge Ventures this spring and summer and beyond. Absolutely. And yeah. we will see you back here. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye.